Okay, guys, welcome. Today we're going to talk about some identities with the Fibonacci numbers. Now, the first identity that we're going to discuss is what the first n Fibonacci numbers sum to. Okay, now if we write this out for a bunch of scenarios, it looks like if we sum the first Fibonacci number, obviously that's just zero, right? If we consider zero the first Fibonacci number, then the next sum we get one, then two then four, then seven, then 12, then 20, then 33, right? Now, if you were to stare at this long enough, one thing that you might find is that the sum of the first N Fibonacci numbers will give you two Fibonacci numbers down, but then subtract one from that, okay? Now we're gonna prove this by induction on N, okay? Now, if N is equal to zero, we wanna know does F zero equal F sub two minus one, right? Just plugging that in the formula. Well, of course this is true because since F two is, this is a typo here, it should be one, right? Since F sub two is one, we get zero is equal to one minus one, which of course is zero equals zero. So the base case works. Okay, now for the inductive case, we're gonna assume that if I sum the first N minus one Fibonacci numbers, that I get Fn plus one minus one, right? Now, again, if you're having trouble seeing where this comes from, the original looks like this. So for the inductive step, we assume this is true for N minus one. So this would be F zero plus all the way up to Fn minus one. And then f of sub n minus n plus two would become n minus one plus two, so f sub n plus one minus one. So we're assuming that that's true, right? And I just uh, wrote this out in some notation just to be a little bit more lazy. So what we ultimately wanna show is assuming that this is true, prove that this is true, okay? Now, of course, if we write out the first, the sum of the first n Fibonacci numbers, Included in that is going to be the first n minus one Fibonacci numbers. And of course that we know is by the inductive hypothesis, f sub n plus one minus one, right? And if we add that to f sub n, of course, f sub n and f sub n plus one would give me f sub n plus two. And then the minus one comes along for the ride. And of course, that's what we wanted to show, All right? So that proves this case. Okay. Let's do another example. Now we wanna prove that the first um, 2n minus one, okay, so here we have odd numbers, right? So we wanna prove that f sub one plus f sub three all the way to the f sub 2n minus one is equal to f sub 2n, okay? And we're gonna do this the same way. We're gonna do this by induction. So the base case, right, is for n equal one since we're starting for n greater than or equal to one. So if n is equal to one, we get that f sub one on the left side, does that equal f sub two? And of course this is yes, because the first two numbers are both one. So that's the base case. So now for the inductive case, we're going to assume that's true for n minus one. So if we do that, what does this look like? Well, we get that F sub one plus F sub three plus F. Now it's two parentheses N minus one minus one. And we're gonna say that that equals F sub two N minus one, right? So really what we're showing here, or really what we're assuming is true. Give myself a little bit more room. Okay, there we go. So now we're assuming, um, again, true for n minus one. So we have to be a little bit careful now, once we distribute out these parentheses, it'll be a little bit more clear what we're assuming is true. Okay, so once this loads here.
Okay, I paused it and then tried to let it go for a little bit longer, but it still didn't work. So, um, so we're just gonna scroll over a little bit here. So now when we simplify this, we're going to get F1 plus F3. And then we'll get a 2n minus 2 minus 1. So this will become a 2n minus 3. And this, of course, is equal to F sub 2n minus 2. And that's what we're assuming is true. Now, we want to prove that this is true. all the way up to f sub 2n minus one. So let me write the previous term. So this proof will work similar to the one that we just did. And we wanna show that this eventually equals f of sub 2n. Well, we know that this part by the inductive hypothesis is f sub 2n minus two, and then plus f sub 2n minus one. But if we sum these two together, of course, this gives us F sub 2n, right? So then that completes the proof. Okay, let's do another one. So now for this one, again, we're gonna prove this by induction. So for the base case, we'll let n be zero. And we wanna show that F zero squared is equal to F zero times F one. And since F zero is zero and F one is one, then of course this holds, right? Because then we get zero equals zero. Now for the inductive case, okay, we're going to assume it's true for n minus one, or in other words, the f zero squared plus f one squared, all the way to f sub n minus one is equal to f sub n minus one times f sub n. Right, because when I subtract one from this, it will be minus one. When I subtract one from this, it will just be n. Okay, now if we write out all n of the squares here, I'm gonna of course include my n minus one squared. Now we know again that this part, we can replace with f sub n minus one times f sub n. Right, and then we're adding this still to our Fn squared. Okay, now if we factor this, we can write this as F sub n times F sub n minus one plus F sub n. And of course, what's this part in the parentheses here? Parentheses here, that's F sub n plus one, which of course is what we wanted to prove. All right, so we're good there. Okay, and those all are not bad. Now, a tougher identity to prove is the following, where we have f sub n squared plus f sub n minus one squared is equal to f sub two n minus one. Now, of course, you could check this for many values of n, but proving this is kind of difficult, right? The problem with this is that the term f sub two n minus one will only contain every other Fibonacci number. So it's not as easy as uh, to apply the recursion property that we know, right? It's not as easy to apply the f sub n plus one is f sub n plus f sub n minus one, right? So let's instead, let's find a formula for f sub two n, all right? Now, if you were lucky, um, or if you knew what the answer was, you might conjecture that f sub two n is given by f sub n plus one times f sub n plus f sub n times f sub n minus one. All right, so let's prove this by induction. So the base case n equals one is fine because if we plug all these in, we get f sub two times f sub one plus f sub one times f sub zero. And of course that will equal f sub two because both sides come out to be one because this is one times one, this is one times zero, and this is one. So this goes away and you get one equals one. Now for the inductive case, if we plug in n minus ones for all these, we'll get f sub n plus, or sorry, f sub n times f sub n minus one plus f sub n minus one plus f sub n minus two is equal to f sub two n minus two. Now, if we write out f sub n plus one times f n plus f sub n times f, uh, 
f sub n minus one, and we apply the recursion formula for these two, well then we can say that f sub n plus one is given by this, f sub n is given by this, right, just the sum of the two preceding terms, and then we could do a little bit of rearranging, right? We can take these two and give me a squared term. I can take these two to give me a squared term and then put the other terms over here, right? And that would of course give me by the inductive hypothesis f sub two n minus two. Now, if we were to know that the original identity was true, if we knew that that original identity was true, then we would get f sub 2n, which is what we want, right? Now, on the other hand, if we did want to prove this identity, right, because we don't know that that's true yet, let's try this by induction now. Well, n equals 1, this holds because we get 1 squared plus 0 squared equals 1 squared. And now we assume that it's true for the inductive hypothesis for n minus 1. And if we write out the left-hand side and we apply the recurrence relation for this first term and we square everything out, well then by the inductive hypothesis, the two squared terms would give me f sub 2n minus three, right? And then I end up with some extra stuff here, which we're going to factor in this way, okay? And then, so once we distribute it out, we get all this junk here. Now, if we know the previous thing that we proved, then this will give us f sub 2n. Um, no, this should be 2n. Oh, yeah, yeah, because the, our indices are different here. So then this here is this, sorry. Right, this, uh, this f sub n times f sub n minus one, if we're replacing this with n minus one, then we can replace this one with n minus one, so then this is gonna be become over here, right? And then we get this, right? Now you might be asking yourself, why did we use uh, the one thing that we were trying to prove in the proof of the other and vice versa? Um, and that's because we used a trick here called simultaneous induction, right? And that's because both of these proofs depended on each other in the induction. Right, and of course that's something that we're allowed to do and that will make induction a little bit more powerful uh, and sometimes that's useful for proving these Fibonacci identities. Okay, but that concludes this video on some fi uh, Fibonacci number identities. I hope you enjoyed and I will see you next time.